Hey everybody, welcome to our podcast. This is our first episode that we're doing on our series. Yep, um, it's pretty exciting because we've never done anything like this before. And yeah, I mean, I've kind of had a little experience with audio because I, you know, um, make music in my free time, but I've never actually done anything that's going out to people. So if anyone's listening, welcome. Yeah, and uh, so our names are Aiden and Jared, my friend here, Aiden, I'm Jared. And we are going we we're going to talk about a lot of different issues in the world. Um, a lot of it could be political, or we could just be something that we're interested in. Yeah, and the stuff that we just fair warning you, the stuff that we um talk about on this show, sometimes we can get really fired up about, and because we're just really passionate about it. So yeah, if you're not into that, leave now. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you have just been warned. might as well. You have been warned. And uh, so we're available on different platforms when when this podcast is all, you know, this episode said and done. It's going to be posted on Anchor, YouTube, SoundCloud, and you can also reach us on social media on our Twitter at Aiden446, right? Mm-hmm. And Jared, at, well, mine is at JB Obelisk. Yep, so you can, if you don't, if you don't see it on SoundCloud, you can just follow our accounts and that's how you can get it, so... Yeah. And uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, post the videos on, like, Facebook on a channel that, I don't know, i got to figure out how to set that up. But. Yeah, we, this is all new to us, so just, you know, just, just stay with us, guys. We'll figure it out as we go along. Yep. Just, just, just stay with us. So, today, before we get into starting, what did you want to get from this podcast? Uh, just... First and foremost, now I know everyone doesn't, you know, um, doesn't agree with what I'm about to say, but first and foremost, our, my goal at least is to, you know, spread, you know, Christ to people who may not know him or may not, you know, you know, who may not think about too much about that kind of stuff, but while providing useful information and while just providing our sense on what we think, you know, and what we think it's about and just, you know, just have, just have fun with it. Yeah, and be able to voice our own opinion out to the world and... Have fun doing it. I think, you know, we can definitely have fun yep. in the process. Yep. So, one of the topics that I is hits home with me. And, and me as well, actually. Not No pun intended there with yeah. the hits home. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Should we get that reference in a second? Trust me. It has to do with baseball and. One of the things, I'm a Cleveland Indians fan, and same, we, we both are, and the Indians have been in the news recently in the past couple months or so about uh, Chief Wahoo basically being taken away from the Indians. Now, we don't mean being taken away from selling in stores, you just mean um, just you know being taken away and not allowing Chief Wahoo to be shown on the uniforms during the field of play. Yeah, and uh, you know it's been under scrutiny for years. With mm-hmm. yeah, uh, it has. They said that it could, you know, it started all the way back in the seventies. Yeah, um, I think it was like specifically nineteen seventy two, if I remember correctly. Probably. That started? Um. Yeah, I would say. But. Yeah, he's been being scrutinized for years. So it, this is nothing new. It's just gone a lot of, um. Um, flack recently because they've actually decided to go through and take him off the uniforms. So, yeah, most of it. See, it was kind of like a. Uh, it was kind of like on the down low sort of thing. People mm-hmm. were talking about it, but it wasn't brought up to a national level, and people were not noticing it until the World Series in 2016 when, when the Indians made it there, which really set people alight, and that's when it started gaining popularity. Which, you know, when a big event such as the World Series or Super Bowl for the Redskins or anything like that happens, there's going to be a lot of people that jump in just because it's so big and they're going to want to get their views across, so. Exactly. And, uh. It, it opens the floodgates. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But if you were, if you, you know, follow closely with the Indians like me and Aiden do, um, the team was playing the toronto blue jays in it was before the world series and it was in alcs yep yes and some native american activist went and brought it to court 
over Chief Wahoo and basically wanted to get it removed and, you know, from the stadium. Yeah, and it, and not only that, but if I remember correctly, the announcers didn't even say the one Indians once. They just referred to us as Cleveland. Yeah, they restrained from using the word Indians because apparently that's offensive. Mm-hmm. Which is complete and utter crap, but, I mean, they do what they do, so... Yeah, and so it it was ultimately rejected by the judge. He did not allow that to happen because, well, I mean, I'm to reasons I don't really know, but I assume that he thought it was kind of ridiculous for them to go ahead and, you know, for them to go through with that. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, and just recently... If you haven't noticed, uh, this past year, 2017, unfortunately, the Indians did not make it as far as in, you know, mm-hmm. since 2016. Yeah. They got to the first round, and I'm still they salty about the, it. They, they lost in the AODS, correct? Yes, and they lost to, of course, the worst team in all of Major League Baseball, the Yankees. <laughs> oh, the, oh, yeah, the Yankees. I thought it was the Warriors for some reason. No. Yeah. But, hey, Lindor did hit that epic grand slam, though. That was amazing. That was awesome. Remember, like, that announcer was freaking, like, he went crazy. That was awesome, though. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> it was... See, I was Santa thinking... Maria! <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking through that whole time, you know, watching the ALDS last, se- uh, you know, last playoffs was... I was thinking, oh, yeah, we're up two games to nothing. You know, we're going to knock out the Yankees. They're the underdog. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, but that did not happen, and somehow they started coming back on us, you know, when we had that healthy roster, you know? Yeah, like, and the, the the really bad part is that in 2016, you know, what, what how many of our pitchers were out? How many of our players were out because of injuries? Um, well, see, our starting rotation consisted of Corey Kluber, Trevor Bauer, and Josh Tomlin. Yeah. Uh, Cookie Carrasco, which they call him Cookie for sh- uh, he's actually Carlos. Carlos is a real name, yeah. They call him Cookie. And uh, then there was Danny Salazar. They're both on the disabled list. Uh, Danny Salazar had some inflammation in his elbow, so therefore he couldn't pitch. And Carrasco had a broken arm. Oh. Or a broken hand, I think, because yeah. he got hit by a pitch or something. And with both of those pitches gone, we managed to make it further, actually, to the last game of the World Series than this, you know, in 2017 when we had our full roster. And one of the main reasons as to why we did not make it far was because Corey Kluber fell apart in the postseason. Because we were expecting, like, 2016, Corey Kluber ran like, basically carried the team all the way to the World Series. Yep, the entire team was on his shoulders. Yeah, and he pitched us to Game 7, and, you know, he was just out of steam by Game 7. Mm-hmm. And oh, plus... Very the, understandable, too. Like, you're playing seven games with little, little to no break. You know, I mean, you can't do that forever. Yeah, and not to mention that Cor- the Cubs have seen so much of Corey Kluber at this point that they're just like, they know exactly what he's going to throw. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was just no more mystery surra- uh, like shrouding, mm-hmm. you know, Corey Kluber. I am pretty mad that the Indians lost, but I got to give it to the Cubs. They kind of, if you agree with me, Jared, they kind of did deserve that win, if you agree. Yeah, I mean, considering we do have two World Series titles in our championship, I mean, our championship, our franchise history, um... You know, they haven't had one, and they I guess they had some sort of, what was it, a goat curse or something? Yeah, goat, yep. The it had to do with a goat. goat. Yep. And, yeah, and they hadn't even won the pennant since 1945. Yeah, so they so, were really horrible yeah. for a long time. Yeah. I guess they do deserve it, but anytime, just like when I was in the grocery store today, I saw a guy with a Cubs hat on, and of course, guess what was on the side of the hat, Aiden? What, what do you think that was? Um, what series champs? Yes, you are right. And yeah. the, I was staring at his hat in a salty, <laughs> I had a salty look on my face. I'm not kidding. Well, I mean, like, I was I, I was trying to think in the back of my head. I'm like, yeah, he has, he deserved that win. But at the same time, I had, like, my mind was clashing. Like, you like, know, I was, uh, oh, you got to whoop it in. <laughs> you just have to br- wear that hat to Giant Eagle. <laughs> in Ohio, mind you. Mind, Yes. And, uh... Hey, at, at least we won't like those people that got into the... Have you seen the video where the Cubs and Indians fans got into an actual fist fight? The, oh, the Indians yeah. guy ended up knocking him out, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are people that... Hey, guys, 
Don't be like that. Those people take sports way too seriously. Mm-hmm. But, um, anyways, after the disappointment of the 2017 season, well, actually, let's, let, let me go back a little bit. The 2016, we lost in Game 7 after tying it up, and then uh, with, mind you, Rajay Davis' is a, a two, two-run home run. Which is amazing. Yeah, which I, is... I did not even think that we were going to get tied, and then that happened, I was like, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, after we lost that game, all those talks came in about Chief Wahoo being taken away, and I was thinking, I'm like, are you serious? Well, I mean, listen, we, okay, there would never be another World Series like that ever again, never. There would never be another World Series where, you know, it's seven games in, and the Cubs are up by how, um, by how many? Um, I think the final score is like eight to seven or yeah, something. Yeah, but like they're up by eight, right? And then we tie it up, and all you guys want to talk about is Chief Wahoo. Are you serious? Yeah, but it was just upsetting that, hey, you're talking to a team that just lost the World Series, and you're saying, yeah, you lost the World Series, that's one bad thing, but the next bad thing, guess what? We're taking away Chief Wahoo mm-hmm. as well. Although it is interesting, though, and I'm not saying that this, you know, makes it 100% accurate, but... What I find interesting, though, is we haven't won... Well, this is when Chief Wahoo was very starting to come into, you know, starting to come into existence, you know. But um, I find it interesting how when Chief Wahoo started appearing, we haven't won a World Series since then. That is interesting to me. I I don't think that that, you know, I don't think that just having a logo results in, you know, um, downgrading of actual physical play, but yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the first... Not the first World Series, but the last World Series that we won was in 1948. If for those who you know don't keep track of the Indians yeah. closely as we do, but we don't enough history. Um, Chief Wahoo was, uh, you know, was drawn by Walter Goldbatch in 1947. He was 17 years old at the time. Yes, and he was hired basically by the owner of the. Indians, and he told him, hey, we need a logo because over the past, you know, 30 years or so, we've been using, like, crappy logos through the years, and it's just been, you know, not consistent. Like, I mean, if you look at the first photo, or the first logo that the Indians used, it was the crappiest drawing. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it was like a red... It was just a plain red colored Indian face, yeah, you know, yeah, like on it, the side. He was actually holding a bat, right? No, actually, that was later when Chief Wahoo came out. But really? it was it was a crappy like drawing of an Indian face, and it was looked like a two year old, like a five year old, you know, drew it or something. It w- it wait oh oh okay yeah I remember that one yep yeah I'll I'll have to show you a picture of it just to let you know but it was uh, it was bad <laughs> and it was <laughs> my um. My nine-year-old brother probably could have drawn it better. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 from what I understand, it was only in use for, for one year. <laughs> one season, and then they're like, yep, <laughs> we better start thinking about another logo. <laughs> oh, man, if it's only used for one year, that's enough proof right there, huh? Yeah, that's that says something right there. <laughs> and Get yourself uh, another drawing, man. Yeah, get, you need to hire someone that actually knows how to draw. Yep. Don't hire five-year-olds to draw logos for a professional... <laughs> baseball team yeah that's <laughs> no because that's what that looked like i'm sorry yeah anyways it's just the truth so after he designed the logo um the ceo at the time of in the indians he's like you know what that's perfect and he constituted the logo for the you know for use on field and everything and if you don't know what Chief who looked like before, you know, because now he he's a red colored, but before he was he had like a big large nose, and he was what was uh, it more? I how, guess how you would call him not really white skin, but like like almost like a pale maybe kind of like a like uh, a pe- more peach color. Yeah, I think, color. I think yeah, it was more peachy. Color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, yeah, he had like a ginormous nose, and he had like an Indian feather. On yeah. his head. Yeah, if you guys thought that this logo was, you know, controversial, the one before this current one was, like, that would have gotten a lot of people wired up. Yeah, that was used until 
1950. And 1950 yep. is when the current one came into use. Yep. Um, there was a gap year as when Chief Wahoo technically wasn't the logo. Now, not many people know that, but there was a gap year where um, it was... Uh, what was it? Oh, it was the baseball one. Yep, yep. Yeah, it was the one with him holding the bat, and it was like a white... It was in the 70s, I yep, think, when not, they used yep, it. Yep, 70s, yep. And then it was not until the 80s as to when they brought back the regular... The regular Chief Wahoo. Regular which Chief was the red, red Chief Wahoo with the smiling teeth and the... Fit. Yep. Now, I'm going to tell you, I do like the baseball version. Yeah, I, that, I thought that was... That, maybe, it, since they took that logo out, maybe they should bring that back. Yeah. They could bring that back, and that would be really cool. I thought it was kind of classy, honestly. The the baseball yeah. one. I it was a classy look. Classy in a good way or a bad way? No, good. It was like, yeah, that looks like real professional. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know. The yep. only the only one that, could have, that was not that five year old wine. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the one criticism I had about that logo was the eyes on Chief Wahoo. If you look close enough, it looks kind of derpy. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but the eyes were, like, looking in different directions. Yeah, like, yeah I was like, Ooh, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, I don't know who I am. Yeah, so it was like, oh, are you looking at the baseball or are you looking at the ground? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, probably, he's probably looking at space is what he's looking at. Yeah. He's in another dimension is what he is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so Chief Wahoo came back in use in the 80s. I think ni- exactly, like, 1980 or 1982, something yeah, like 1982, that. Yeah, 1982, I think. And... That was when... That's current. That is like... The, it, it has extended to the present. It's the one we still... Well, not... I mean, we've changed the C, obviously, but it's the one that they still sell in stores now mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, that's the one we currently use now. And they, they will occasionally um, use the current logo, but on a actual person's body, you know, like holding a bat. Yeah. So, you know, so they, they, they'll alternate. I guess that's kind of like a... Uh, I don't know. They still sell it in the team shops. And sometimes if you go to the game, you also see the old pre-1950 Chief Wahoo worn at the games. Yeah. Like, there's people that still have them. I mean, there's people... Just a bit like some nostalgia. Yeah, nostalgia. So, getting into the topic at hand here... Yep. Okay, because we've been waiting on for like 17 minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, Chief Wahoo is a logo for a baseball team but a lot of people will see it as racist and that is usually the native american side that sees it as racist well not really even native americans it's more like if you want to be really honest i think it's more just you know just people that don't you know that just like to complain about everything like 90 percent of native americans that you talk to Actually, say that the logo doesn't bother them. Yes, and uh, I mean, there's, you know, like you you'll see people on the news that start talking about it, and um, you know, a lot of them, it's just they they agree with the with the banning of Chief Wahoo. They basically mm-hmm. just want to create an uproar. A lot of them, they don't. Or some of them, are, they just want to join the bandwagon. Yeah, some of them aren't even offended by it necessarily huh. because they're not mm. Native Americans. They, they just think it's cool to join what their friends are doing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so so how... That's what really makes me mad, by the way, is that, you know, when some... Okay, it's okay to protest against Chief Wahoo if you have actual evidence backing it up. But when you're just, you know, jumping on it because of, you know, oh, it's what everyone else is doing, that really makes me mad. Exactly, that makes me makes me upset as well but so how did native american mascots begin in the u.s what uh, do you think uh like how, how think about our our nation's history what do you think like i mean just how how do we treat native americans do you think we treated them like um crab i guess yeah we, i know we liked like the trail of tears you know yeah, we, we, we yep. m- made a move, move when we move with the louisiana and, purchase yep and you know, I think with that outlook, because it was like around what in the eighteen hundreds, right? Yeah, with eighteen Louisiana, early eighteen hundreds. Yeah, eighteen like eleven. I think if I remember quickly. Yeah, this is off the top of our yeah, head. Of I, course, I, but... I could be off by like twenty years, but <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yeah, um, so, sometime in the early eighteen hundreds. Yeah, well, you know, look it up and let us know what that answer is. Yep. 
<laughs> we would love to hear your comments. Yes, please uh, send me a email. <laughs> um, so, well, actually, Native American mascots originated in the 19th century into the earliest early 20th century when professional sports were on the rise. Um, they they say the mascot surfaced with the closing of the frontier, urbanization, industrialization, and the subjugation of Native America. But, so basically, what does that mean? Um, it's basically like during the Industrial Revolution and stuff, um, had like a lot of American pride to it, I think. Yeah, and you know, because of that pride, we saw the Native Americans, I guess... I guess a savage is kind of, and yes, they didn't deserve, that, that's they didn't exactly in, right. They didn't deserve to be in a country that is making progress. That's making you know, that's um, that's building upon itself. That's trying to become like, I guess you could call it an empire at that time. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't consider milk an empire, but I guess that's what they thought at the time. Uh, I, I wasn't living in eighteen hundred, so I don't know. And there's uh, not many people know this because they don't teach it in history class and. Aiden, you probably don't know this either because I, you know, I just learned this recently, so mm-hmm. I didn't know this. But they had Indian boarding schools. Did you ever hear about that? I actually did know about that. Yep, and that's something that they won't teach you. Which is, I mean, if they're gonna teach us the history, teach us all of it. It's almost like the government is trying to hold this information off to the normal, you know, U.S. citizen. Oh, that that that's exactly what they're doing, dude. That's I mean, cause like. I mean, I'm not going to get into everything that CNN is doing and stuff, but, like, yeah, they tend to hold a lot of stuff back, is all I'm going to say. Yeah, I mean, we can make a whole nother podcast oh, about we this. Oh, talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that. But that's going to set up a new a pool that we don't want to Yeah, well, it's going to go into a rabbit hole that we're not going to come out yeah, of. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, we're not digging ourselves into that. Yeah. And, uh, anyways, the Indian, if for those who don't know what an uh, Indian boarding school is or never heard of it, an Indian boarding school is basically... They wanted to teach the Indian people to not be Indians, like to not be Native Americans. They're trying to search them to be more American, I guess. Yeah, because they believed, like, you know, they wanted to, quote-unquote, Americanize these citizens that they were trying to basically erase their culture. That is something I don't agree with. That, yeah, that, that, I, that's a point for the protesters right there. That's a point for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you want to know when this uh, Indian boarding school is, like, really on the rise? When? It was around, like, the late 1800s into the early 1900s. When it would become more developed. Yes, and what did I just say? I said mascots were coming around this exact time. Yeah, that is not a coincidence. Mm-mm. Indian not boarding all. Indian boarding schools have a connection... With baseball mascots now and, and football mascots, yeah, no, which, not just baseball, just with every a, any sport, a, a, any Native American mascot that exists in sports. I mean, you look at um, you look at the Redskins logo. Oh yeah, the Redskins logo, and, and we'll get more into that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Redskins, they're another example of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and they receive, I would say, equal to as much flack as the Indians do. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that, Jude? Oh, even more than the Indians, I think. Because I think it actually looks more realistic, which is why I think the Redskins are more hated upon than even the Indians are. Mm-hmm. And uh, not to mention, I didn't look at it so much in uh, like schools and stuff, but it, yeah. is, it mm-hmm. is in schools as well. You know, uh, an example of that for... Uh, an area in Ohio would be the Copley Indians. Yeah, and that's another thing about, um, this is, I, I know we'll talk about the Cleveland Indians specifically in this podcast, but, um, like, a lot of the colleges now have begun, um, removing mascots like that from colleges because, you know, they deem it to be racist or, they say, culturally inappropriate. Oh, yeah, that's exact terms they use for it. It's... That's exact terms that MLB used, actually, when they, um, when they removed Chivago. They said, we want to make, um, Baseball diverse and fun for everyone, and we see the Chief Wahoo logo is culturally inappropriate to today's society. Yeah, and he like quoted that just off the off the top of his head right now, but um, yeah, it's pretty interesting in the political world, a politically correct world we live in. Yeah, but hey, we're not politically correct. We're gonna give it the truth, and we're gonna give it hardcore, and so. we're gonna give our opinion too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, 
Political correctness does not exist yet. But I like to look at both <laughs> sides of the story here. I kind of absolutely. I, I'm you know I understand like if for example if we go into gun control, I want to talk about why these people think that we should ban guns. Yeah, you know? which is why we just gave you like a 25 minute and five second you know lecture on the Native American history mm-hmm. because we want to look at both sides of it. We don't just want to be be one sided. And, you know, most of these mascots are dramatized to make them look like the stereotypical Native American. Uh, I mean, in many cases, this isn't very accurate. It has become popular to use mascots to depict a Native American stemming all the way back to the Boston Tea Party. Oh, so even 17... 1765 65, or... 65 to 1770. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, you were correct, dude. It's 1775. Oh, yeah, 1775. Yep, yep. I was off by... Or 1774. It, I think it's either yeah. one of those years. But and I call right myself now. a history buff. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to remember years sometimes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. In sixth grade. Man, that was a long time ago. Yep. Man, the memories. <laughs> but it's always fun to look at this, because there's... Yeah. So, for, if you... For those who, you know, need a refresher... Uh, the Boston Tea Party was when uh, activists, not so much activists, but they were, you know, patriots, they were called. Oh, that- oh, oh yeah, B- back then, guys, if you don't know so much about um, American history, we were committing the highest crime possible. The, the crime we were committing was treason, and back then, what we were doing to make our country free and to make our own country, we would have been executed for it. We would have been put to death for it. Mm-hmm. That is the... In the British um, monarchy, that was the highest crime a single person could commit. Mm-hmm. It was not looked upon really well. Yes. And for those, like I said, for those who don't know much about the Boston Tea Party, that was when a group of, um, you know, patriots, they were more like radical thinkers because a lot of those people during that time... Mm-hmm. Well, let's call them rebels. They were rebels, basically, is what they were. Yeah, they, they most of the citizens didn't think about freedom, you know, like, to be free from Great Britain, because they still felt, you know... They were attached to the cane. Yeah, they didn't want to split away, but they were mm. starting to get aggravated by the different, like, intolerable acts and stuff Not like that. Not only that, it's because of the taxes, and, you know, he was... Yeah, the, yeah. the un... Just, 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 the, just the unjust, like, the, just the injustice of what they were doing. Of what the Britain government was doing at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, so... These patriots boarded, I think it was four British ships, but they were the East East India Company, uh, a tea company, because the tea company was actually running out of business. It was starting to lose money because, I don't know, American uh, people were not buying their tea. Yeah. So Britain was like, well, you know what? We're going to sell this in the u.s but guess what we're not going to tax you guys for selling it so you guys can sell it tax-free yeah. into the u.s yeah. which that undercut american sellers and made them upset because hey we get taxed but this company doesn't that's not fair we're heck? losing we're yeah, losing business yep so these out of retaliation the patriots boarded the ships they threw a whole bunch of cartons of, you know, boxes, crates, or whatever, of tea into the Boston Harbor. Yeah. And mm-hmm. during this... Basically saying as a, you know, um, we don't like you guys, so we're gonna, we're gonna make, do this to aggravate you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they ended up doing a lot of other things as well, like, they, uh, for people who were on the ship at the time, they ended up, like, stripping them down, like, naked or something and really? putting like tar on them and oh, like geez. feathering them and wow just basically making fun of them it's like wow but i almost forgot a point here when they boarded the ship what were they dressed as probably indians right yep native americans they're dre- they're dressed in headdresses you know like the what the indians yeah. wear and in that's the old times. what relates back to what we're talking about today yep yep and you know that you know it the american people always wanted always loved to Dress as Native Americans. And you know why, Jode? Because what? not only back then, but still today, even with Cleveland Indians and every other sports team, Indians are, you know, symbolizes being prideful and being, you know, being able to get out of any situation and just fighting till the end. Uh, guys, it's not a racist logo. It's a form of showing passion. It's a form of, you know, saying we can get through anything, you know, we're going to battle to the very end and we, ha- you know, we have a lot of pride. So it's not a racist symbol. It's a 
it's a, you know, it, it is a statement. Mm-hmm. That we're not going to be beat. That, that's all it is. That's not racist. Yeah, and this also happens with uh, some people, you know, like on Halloween, you see people will dress as Indians all the time. And yeah, then, you know, why, go there and, why don't they protest that? I mean, they're concentrating on the Indians. Why don't you protest on, you know, oh, that kid's looking like an Indian for Halloween? I mean, obviously, I don't think it's that popular anymore. Nowadays, we're worried about dressing as clowns. You know, now we're scared of clowns <laughs> and everything. <laughs> that, that, that clown scale, man. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I don't think you know, dressing as an Indian now for Halloween is that popular. Yeah. But uh, it might have been, you know, before 2000, you know. Yeah. That yeah, might have been. Two, yep. Yeah, I would say that. Yep. But, but yeah, so it's been it's been around for a long time. And uh back to the topic at hand though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, European Americans have always fashioned individual and collective identities by masquerading as Indians, like I said. Mm-hmm. And it can still be relevant today as in yeah. with like I said Halloween mm. uh dressing up in costumes cuz as I said we consider you know it needs to be prideful, you know. Now, not many people know this, but there, um, there's a player that the Indians are said to name name their team after. Yep, he was actually he was a yep, Native yep, American player. This. Um, what was his name? Um, Louis uh, Louis Sakalak. Yep, that was his name. Yep. Yeah, if that's how you pronounce it. He was a name. pitcher, right? No, actually, I think he was a fielder. He, he played a, uh, um. I yeah. think maybe third or first base. Yeah, he, like he broke a lot of records, though. Like, like he, he, he was very good. Yeah, he was a very good player. Yep, and that's what, yep. And and, and they nicknamed him. Guess what they nicknamed him? What? They nicknamed him Chief Wahoo, actually. Did you know it? Mm-mm. Yeah, they nicknamed him Chief Wahoo. And that's actually when the name took off. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the a lot of the, I mean, reports that I've read since, you know, I, I looked pretty deep into this topic, but... A lot of people don't even know where Chief Wahoo came from. There's no. just speculation. Well, people think that she, the name Chief Wahoo, guys, has been around a lot longer than the Indians. It's been like, it was just any name used for a character that is looks like a Native American, basically. Mm-hmm. But they, there was a, car, a comic that came out before Chief Wahoo, uh, you know, came out on the uniforms, and it was called The Little Indian. And yeah. It was like in a little comic, and it kind of resem- It was very closely resembling the first version of Chief mm. Wahoo back in 1948. Mm. And it would basically say the layout of the game that took place either before the what they think the next game is going to be like. Mm-hmm. It's basically like it, it's basically the equivalent of a pe- of a Peanuts panel. Yeah, and it was like it would show like what the last game mm. was. Like if the Indians won, it's like. I saw one about the little Indian, which was, you know, I had like an Indian face and yep. then a bod- it, body with like a, you know, like a, no, uh, I don't know what it is, like a, like a, like, like a or li- little clothing yeah, on, but, you call it, yep. and he was running with like a spear in his hand and it's like, the Indians just beat the whatever team and they're in second place, you know, catching up to the... Let's just say the Yankees. Yeah, you know, and, they really and then they'll be yelling stuff like Zog Octo or something like that. They'd be talking like a weird language. Like the, yeah, but it that, was, that's just for comedy. It was just for yeah. It was almost like in the sports page, but it was like a political cartoon for the sports page. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just make people laugh. Yeah. So people believe that the little Indian, maybe the person that came up with that, maybe came up with the Chief Wahoo mm-hmm. name, but they're not sure because the creator Walter. He did not come up with Chief Wahoo as the name. He didn't nope, have a name nope. for it. Like I said before, Chief Wahoo existed even before the Indians. It was, as I said, used to describe any character that was even partly like resembling Native American. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a... I'll have to look it up here in a second, but there was a something... Um, it was really funny. It was a funny chief name that was for a sports team. I, I gotta show you. Chandler, uh, what are you doing? This is too funny. Um, yeah, so, yeah, this has got a long and complex history. And people are still, you know, getting fired up about it, what, like 40 years later? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's crazy. 
I, I want to find this really funny name. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I don't have that. Well, let's just take a bit from that right now. Let's just, you know, let me, we can find it later. But, yeah. um, yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, it's, this history continues today, too. People are still protesting against the Yushachi of who They still think it's racist. I mean, you know, they'll be out there on, on opening day. Every opening day, every year they're out there. I mean. And I've seen them, and what I think is, like, guys, stop. Like, just stop. Like, we're here to enjoy a baseball game, please. And and that's their whole point is to disrupt the game, so then or the enjoyment of the fans that are walking into yeah. the stadium, and they want them to stop and think about, yeah, you know what you're wearing right now, that's offensive to us. They're trying to say that. How many people are out there? Like four or five? Like come on. I mean, usually, and it's oh, not even really Native American because that's sitting out there half the time. It's okay. If, it's like forgive me for saying this, but but white millennial liberals. I'm sorry, that's all there was to it. That's who they are. Those people standing out there who are not Native Americans, mind you, and they're saying, oh, that's offensive, that, you know, you're wearing something that's offensive to the Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Be quiet, okay? If you're not Native American, you don't have any say in it, okay? Just, I understand if you're Native American, you know, you can make a statement about that, but if you're not, just stay out of it, okay? Please. Yeah, and they'll make, a, they'll find any little thing to get all crazed up and mad like i said before people like to be annoyed by everything and like to you know they like they to... they want to make a change they just want to get money a lot of the times mm-hmm. you know like a settlement or something yeah you know they'll do that just with anything just to just to make it public yeah not really money Jared. I, I think it's more just like they just like to complain about a lot of things that's mm. i mean we're we are very millennials i mean we're millennials too i think we are the only like one of the only millennials who are conservative i think mm-hmm. like yeah, but anyway, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, millennials, a lot of millennials our age just like to complain about things. I find anything to complain about. Yep. And Chief Wahoo has been around for so like o- almost 72 years now. Yeah. So 71 years uh, Chief Wahoo has been used, and unfortunately he's going to be laid to rest at only 72 years old. Congratulations, millennials. You ruined one of the greatest sports logos of all time. Good going. What are you going to remove next? The name? Mm-hmm. But Absolutely horrible. Yeah, they're getting rid of Chief Wahoo in the 2019 baseball and, season. Yeah. And, and that's not the millennials' ultimate goal. That's not the ultimate goal. We know what the ultimate goal is, Joe. What is the ultimate goal? To change the name of the team. Not, I, I don't even think about that. I think it's actually just to take care of the team altogether, just to get rid of it. I don't even want to think it's to change the name. I think it's just to get rid of it. Well, I don't know. I don't think necessarily they're upset about the baseball team. It's just no, the just, name system. Yeah. They Like, we could go back to the name Cleveland Spiders. They would be happy about but it. But it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound... I mean, what? Do you want a kid to picture a... A scary spider? When I think about team, no. I mean, well, the no. first thing I think of when I think of Cleveland spiders is like the Spider-Man logo. You know what I mean? That's what and, I think. Of, <laughs> I I think of the little um. If you've ever seen one of the wings, that creepy um spider that's in that cave. Ooh. Yeah, it's creepy. On oh, that spider in Harry Potter, I don't remember his name, but yeah, I just think of a creepy, or oh, like one of those kaiju um spider monsters. That's what I think of when I hear Cleveland spiders. Like <laughs> I don't want that. No, no. Get out of my face. Fool. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want Indians. Just leave it like it is, please. I don't want to picture a you know ten foot creepy spider with creepy legs. Ugh. Yeah, that's gonna be scaring a lot of people. Yeah, oh, those you know arachnophobia. They're uh, not gonna want to go to the football. I mean the baseball games. Football, football, football game. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm jumping subjects here. <laughs> um, jumping different sports, man. All right. Um. Yeah. All right, let, um. The next point at hand. Yeah. Next so, point hand. anyways, going Jim. back to them removing it in 2019. Yep. So, wh- so why do you think? Why are the Indians in a rush to remove the logo so quick? P- political pressure. It's pressure. They have been, and I'll we'll talk about this. You know, we'll talk about this later. But the yeah, the difference between the Indians and the Redskins is that the Redskins, for right now at least, they're resisting the pressure to change their logo and their name. But the thing with the Indians is, this is unnormal for MLB because it works a lot of the time with the NFL and, you know, the NBA, but it's, the MLB has been resisting it for like, you know, they haven't really been one to talk about political pressure and all that stuff. So it's kind of weird that they're making that decision. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, and I, I, this is what I think. 
and uh, there may be a lot of information to back it up too i have seen articles on the internet about that the indians were pressured to get rid of chief wahoo not because of the activists alone but the all-star game do you know what that is well, I can tell you a bit about what that was, guys, if, if we don't know. Um, they were offered a, um, normally, with an all-star game, the players for each team were um, offered a sum of money, right? Mm-hmm. But I think doing this all-star game, if they didn't, you know, if they moved the logo or whatever, they were offered, I think, like two or three times the amount of money that they were given mm, normally. So, I think that has a part to play if you think so, if you agree with me, Judd. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um... But the commissioner of MLB talked to the Indians. This is this is my scenario that I came up with, you know, just from articles and in you know in my head. The commissioner came to the Indians. You know, he knocks on the door, like so, <laughs> and the, like like you do. <laughs> and Paul Dolan answers the door, the CEO of the Indians, and he opens like, "Hello, oh hi, commissioner, come on in." And the commissioner's like, "Hey, I got a deal for you," and he's like, "What's that?" Do you want the All Star Game in Cleveland? And he's like, "Oh heck yeah, 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 that, that's a good idea. Great, can I have it? Whoa, 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 wait. One condition: you can have the All Star Game, but you need to remove your logo for this game. Mm-hmm. You can't have it. You can't show it. You have to have the crappy C logo. Well, that's not crappy. The C logo is cool, but you have to have the C logo. Well, he didn't basic. He basically just said, "Yeah, I." You cannot have Chief Wahoo anymore. You can't have that on field during yeah. the game. Here's how he probably actually said it for the All-Star game. Hey, do you want two times more money than you normally make? Then if you get rid of your logo, you'll get paid. you get paid a lot more. And I the mean, manager's probably thinking, give me, give me, give me the money. You think you got to think of the <laughs> economics of yep. this. Yeah, because the MLB is a business, mind you. It's not just for fun. They have to want a business. It is a Yeah, and the commissioner looks at this as a detriment to their business because they're thinking well we're going to lose money because the indians no one's going to want to watch the baseball game because they're going to protest and be like i'm not watching this baseball yeah. game because there's chief wahoo yep. that racist logo on the field yep and and um uh, uh yeah there's another thing i saw um this is i don't even know why i watched this but um there was a news report um on tv obviously a um, news report going around how um this guy was saying every time he watched an Indians game. He had to sit down with his family and talk about why that logo was won and talk about, you know, why it's considered racist. Yeah, I mean, like, when you want when you want to go watch an Indians game, you don't want to talk about how racist the team's logo or the name is. You want to enjoy the like, baseball Like, let's game. go tribe. Like, that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, and even saying that, the, the If I say that, they'd be like, no. Don't say that. Don't say go tribe. That's racist. <laughs> you know, they, Seriously, guys. Seriously. Everything... You know, they'll find everything racist. Yeah. But anyways, the economics of it, the just like the All-Star game, it, did you ever hear about the NBA All-Star game? That's coming to Cleveland as well. Really? Yeah, soon uh, the Cavaliers will be, you know, the oh, state oh, Quicken Loans Arena yeah, will be what's hosting gonna be, it. What's going to be next? Oh, the Cavaliers are racist to people who have a little bit of um, night blood in them or whatever. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen, yeah. but luckily. Um, anyways... Uh, it, it brings in a lot of dough to the the city. The city makes a lot of money off it. Yeah, I need a sound effect for that yeah. one. But yeah, the city makes a lot of money off this just one game. I mean, they make mil- probably oh, millions, 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 yeah, of millions at least. Because there's so much people that attend the All Star game because they get to see all these famous baseball players that are so good. Mm, and not to mention that the money they make from the home run derby. Mm, like oh, every home run yeah. derby, that place is sold out. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, I think it's always in San Diego, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, I'm not by sure. By Petco Park, I think. Um, guys, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think it's in San Diego. Yes. Um, oh boy, I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, what do you guys think? I would want you guys to, you know, comment, sound off about it because yep. I have a question. Yeah, give us your views. I have a question. What's more important? An all-star game in Cleveland that'll bring, you know, maybe a couple million dollars at least, and it's only one game. Right, Or yeah. Or get rid of, 
you know, get rid of Chief Wahoo forever get and never Get rid of a logo that has been around for 72 years and that is synonymous with Cleveland fans. Like, and sentimental. We, we love this logo to death. I mean, like, it, yeah. I mean, I'm... I, I don't know if, you know, Joe told you this, but do you want to tell the story that you told me about your, um... Oh, yes. I was actually going to just get into that. Um, well, you know... It's how it's personal to you, you know? Because it, it's personal to us, like, on a plus level. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate mm. to this story, especially any Clevelanders mm. that may be yeah. listening to this yeah, podcast. Yeah, this is going out to you, Cleveland fans. Um... Yeah, anyone that is from this area will understand how much professional sports means to us. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you just you go in the city anywhere you walk, any store, any restaurant, you see a Cavaliers jersey, oh, an see Indians Indian jersey, jersey, a Browns jersey, a Browns jersey. We are sometimes even an Ohio State jersey. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see a lot of different jerseys sporting out all of our favorite teams. Yep. You know, showing that pride, Cleveland pride, Ohio pride, O H I O. You know. Yep. You know, you can go into any shop and say OH, and then you'll get an IO from yep. the other side. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, it's just we have that pride yep. that I don't think a lot of other cities have. Well, all the states for that matter. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna shoot at um, uh, Atlanta here. Because <laughs> uh, if you know anything about the Atlanta teams, they don't have... Sorry to anyone that is any yeah. an Atlanta yeah. fan, but I know that's saying, hey, Atlanta first, Braves first off, or something. First off, Atlanta is an awesome city because it's where The Walking Dead is located. So you guys are awesome with that. That's an awesome show, and I'm so honored that you guys have that city to film that show, and that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> not to pick on you know so much, but the Atlanta fans are not as I don't know. It's just they don't have that high turnout as. You know, Cleveland games are. They're, they're not as passionate. Yeah, about, they're not as passionate. Sports. I guess that's a good, that's a good word for it. They're not as passionate. Mm-hmm. And but that's besides the point. Yeah, yeah. So um, you guys still show passion. Though. I mean, we're not trying to you know shoot anyone down. So yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of yeah. passionate fans out there, but it's just not Georgia, as high turnout. Georgia's a great state. I've been through it a ton of times. Going with my family on vacation, it's an amazing state, guys. You guys are awesome. Yes, and you know that all that Cleveland pride. You know, it's built. It's brings that sentimental feeling. So yeah. if some someone's to take a logo away from a team, we're gonna get fired up. I mean, yeah. do, do you think we're just gonna sit idly by no. and let you take away our logo? No, we're not. No, I mean that's like with the Browns. You know, like they changed the logo of the team. You know, the helmet, and they just like changed the shade or something. And people are like, I don't what, like it. What? 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 I've known the helmet. The shade of this helmet for years, and why? Yeah, you... well, it's a, well. I mean, a lot of people didn't even know the difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people are like, you know, they were on the TV. They were interviewing people and saying, "Which is the new logo for the Browns?" And <laughs> like they, a, they showed the thing. It's like, I don't that's know. that's a new logo. That looks the same. But <laughs> anyways, you know, yep. people are like, "Are you serious?" You guys, you know, they get upset if one little change yep. is on one team. But yep. you know. I happen to be a fan of a sports team in each of these categories. Cavs, Browns, Indians. Which is, of course, basketball, baseball, and football. Mm-hmm. Not soccer. Uh, American football, you know, field goals, touchdowns, oh, yeah. all we're, that. We're talking about the goods. We're talking about the football, like, like the tailgating and all that. The real football. Oh, Sorry out to you all, yeah. the football, the fans. The real men. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... But the one team that I watch the most would be the Cleveland Indians. Oh, and baseball I, is a... Man, baseball's amazing. <laughs> and I became interested in the team when I was just young. You know, like, my grandpa was the first person to actually get me interested in the team. And, you know, try to guess what got me interested. Um, the character. Yeah, Chief Wahoo. Yep. Out of all things in the world, my grandpa, we, we used to, like, build a clubhouse in the backyard, as I would call it. But it was just, you know, like a fort, I guess. Yep. And it was made out of, like, a part of the old fence that... Because my grandpa installed new fence in the backyard of my grandma's house. And so we took out a lot of that old fence. But the Mm -hmm. old fence we used to, like, put up a wall for the fort. And then the (laughs) ceiling was actually just a tarp, like a blue tarp. And then the floor was also a blue tarp. So it was kind of like a little house. Man, those days were awesome. Those days were awesome. Those days were fun. I really miss those days. And, uh... 
there was like so anytime it would rain which th- that was the one downside to the roof it would sag from the water so we'd have <laughs> to like push it yeah push it up to stop the and yep. then the water would go flying everywhere <laughs> <laughs> yep oh no look out <laughs> so like right in front of the clubhouse my we would the first day we put a chief wahoo stake and it had like so it would go into the ground you'd hammer it into the ground and then it would stay there now i don't know what Wait, ha- a chief wahoo stake you know like not like a not like a tenderloin <laughs> that's not <laughs> no like- that's not what i mean like a stake that literally influenced the wahoo logo no i mean it's like a imagine it's like made out of wood and it's the chief wahoo so logo. you'll say it's a normal stake it's not a I, i'm just messing with you never mind i'm just messing with you <laughs> so it you know it's like a you know like something you put up in the front yard like you know, people put up sports logos in their front yard. It's also used for construction. If you ever seen the movie, who you know what I'm talking about? Yes. But they go that pancake shop, jeez. <laughs> Why don't I go back to that? <laughs> so you know, he would hammer it in the ground. And he showed me how to hammer it into the ground, and you know, I looked at that logo and I just thought it was pretty cool. And you know, mm-hmm. sometimes I would you know tune into the baseball games when Grandpa was mm-hmm. watching it. Um, yeah. you know, so I had that sentimental feeling to it because. You know, my grandpa got me attached to that logo, but then, you know, he ended up passing away from um, cancer. From cancer, yep. Yeah, he had uh, mm-hmm. prostate cancer. So what year was that? 2000... Like, 2006. Okay. Was when he passed I, away. I was going to say 2007, but... And, you know, I moved out of state in 2005, and so I wasn't there when he passed away. To the Bahamas, right? Yes. All right. And he... Yeah, so I wasn't able to be there for when man, he passed away, and man, I can't even imagine. That's like, yeah, it, it's it was it was hard on me, and you know, ever since he passed away, all that stuck with me about Chief Wahoo and stuff yeah. like that. And you know, I got into the Indians more and more yep. through the years, and now we're huge fans, obviously. So. Yeah, now I keep I keep tabs on them yep. on, you know, on the radio and stuff. I'll, I'll just be like. Every day, I'll be listening to the yeah, Indians. Yeah. I, I am surrounded with news from the Browns, the Cavs, the yeah. Indians. You know, you ask me something, what's going on with the Cavs right now? Okay, well, J.R. Smith threw a bowl of soup at a coach. Okay. <laughs> uh, he, did you hear about that? No, wait, what happened? He threw a bowl of soup at a coach? Yeah, he got, like, I don't know what it was, like, what caused him to throw it, but he threw it at an assistant coach. I can and, imagine just, hey, splat! <laughs> and you right know, in the face. And on the radio station, <laughs> I was like something from, from like Looney Tunes. Splat! <laughs> and uh, so immature, oh, but anyways. Yeah, very immature, dude. <laughs> and so, guess what? On the station, they were talking about what type of soup did he throw? <laughs> so, like, was it tomato? Was it chicken noodle? <laughs> was, was it, it? Was it pesto? Was it you know, like, they were trying to figure it out. Like, was it tofu? T- tofu? <laughs> that would be a sin. I like, I, like, I like tofu, though. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really anyway, have any flavor yeah. to it, but... Uh, yeah, so that was stupid. You know, like, anyways, I know these types of... I know these types of, uh, you know, um, things, because I just listen to the radio yeah. all the time. We are not intended to tune in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see... So so I had a lot of time with my grandpa because I spent like the majority of my first five years with him because my mom and dad would be working. Yeah. And I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't be able to spend time with my mom yeah, and dad. Yeah, his, his, his parents are very busy, guys. Like, yeah. This kid's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, after I moved out of state and everything, I got attached to... Chief Wahoo even more because my about my grandpa passing away and mm-hmm. so you know when I think of you know a lot of relating this back to the racism that surrounds Chief Wahoo, a lot of people t- don't tend to look at what the sentimental value is that is placed on yeah. Chief Wahoo. But like for like particularly for you, Jared, like you don't want it not banned because it's just a logo. You think of your grandpa when you see that. You know, you think yeah. of the memories you've spent with him. You think of you know the time you spent with them. Yeah. No. So, so that's why you're so mad that it's being taken away. It's not really the logo itself. It's more of what it represents for you personally. Yeah, and I don't think that it's seen... Like, I don't see it as racist. Uh, growing up, I didn't say, no. wow, this is going to offend a lot of people. You didn't... <laughs> we weren't concerned with that. We were concerned about, oh, that logo is amazing. That's cool. Yeah, and to think this has It's awesome. I don't think it has been brought up in the news, you know, until... 
you know, maybe five years ago was when it started to pick up. Yeah, it was really starting to take off, yeah. Yeah, because it saying it was been going on since the seventies, that would have I wouldn't have never known that unless I looked it up because I didn't know that it was on the you know, the station. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't know at all. Yeah. So you wanna talk about some of the other logos that have been that have been um that have been combated have been combated? Yeah, and oh. one one second though, but I got a uh interesting thing. It's like the Native Americans don't want to look at Chief Wahoo as that. They tend to overlook that. They yeah. don't – like, look, we – the commissioner of baseball, even Paul Dolan, the CEO of the Indians, he – you know, he's looking at both sides of the argument here. Yeah. He's not just being like, yep, we're we're going to keep Chief Wahoo. We're going to ignore the activists. Screw you guys, yeah. He is looking at it. He's being – you know, he's considering both sides. He's yeah. saying, well, I understand the Native Americans see this as an offensive logo. Yeah. But then but he at the sees... same time, the personal sentimental value it has to fans. Yeah, exactly. And not only fans in Ohio. There were Indians fans all over the United States, probably. There's probably an Indians fan in um, Wyndham, um, Wyndham State, um, California, maybe. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just like I don't I don't understand Paul Dolan. A lot of people, it, he, people will look at Chief Wahoo, and they'll say, "Yep, no, actually, they'll look at Paul Dolan." Sorry, that's what I meant to say. They'll yeah. look at Paul Dolan and <laughs> say, "Yep, you're the man who got rid of Chief Wahoo." Seventy two years, this logo nope, has been. No, nope, it's not him. It's the people that were pushing him to. That's not Paul Dolan's fault. He has to want a company, guys. You know, how many, like, how many assets does he have, probably? And how many people does he have to keep track of and stuff, you know? Exactly. A lot. So, um, yeah, I don't understand that. Um, so, just like other teams, you know, the in- like the Indians been pressured, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And... You know, I'm sure it doesn't make sense to a lot of other teams as well. No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me because I don't see any racism involved whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm a sure freaking most character. Android. Like, come on, it's bullcrap. What other team? You you know, you look at other teams that are pressured. The Washington Redskins oh, are also pressured. Let's fly upon them next, okay? Let's get this out of the way. I mean. <laughs> This is gonna okay. I'm sorry, fans, if I'm will have to cause like a riot or an ups war or something, because I know the Redskins are very, very, n- let's just say, negatively looked upon by a lot of people, even more so than the Indians. Yeah, for you, for those who do not know anything about sports, if you've been living under a rock your whole entire life, the Washington Redskins are an NFL team that you know, have been under fire for mm. years and even more so than the Indians. Yeah, before one, we're about to enter a war zone. <laughs> yeah, the the Washington Redskins are even worse because on two fronts. They're similar with the Indians, though, because, for one, their logo is could be considered racist, not as bad, I think, as some other logos. Like, I guess, you know, people, Chief Wahoo has been the most looked upon well logo well i actually want to say that jared because like i've actually done comparisons and i think the redskins are fired at more than the indians actually hmm. because of what the logo looks like it looks more like an indian you know like i saw an ad well um posted by american indian society something like that and it was basically of a um super bowl that the redskins played in it was a play and, like, it didn't have a logo on the field or on the helmet. Like, they had the helmet on, but it was, like, had the logo blood out. And then they say, it is still uh, American football. Take the logo away. That's what it said. Yeah, and the CEO, the owner of the, the current owner of the Redskins, he does not want the team to uh, give up on, yeah. you know, the logo. He doesn't want to get rid of it. He wants it to, you know, be kept. So, uh, yeah, so, so, um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, he, he just been resisting it. He's just been trying to, you know, 
he just been um he just been trying to um you know just keep him keep keep the protesters at bay. Yeah. So. Anyways, sorry about that. Um, I kind of lost te- my technical difficulties. Yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, yeah, so the owner of the Washington Redskins, he wants to keep it to the you know the logo, the name, because it's sentimental to their fans and it's part of their history, is how he said it. Uh, you know he. This guy called uh, by the name of George Preston Marshall was handed the football team in 1932. Uh, they moved several times before settling in Washington, D.C. In 1937, Marshall decided to develop a fight song and a marching band. Really? And this is a fun fact here. The marching band and uh, the fight song, that was the first team in the NFL to feature either of those. Mm-hmm. Most... No, no other team had that yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, the logo, as seen above, which is the Washington Redskins logo, which looks like, you know, a Native American head with, uh, you know, it has like a feather on the back, and it's encompassed by a what is it like a yellow circle? Yeah, yeah it has like yeah. a yellow circle with a white feather on the outside. And, uh, so, yeah, they don't want to get rid of, oh my gosh, I'm losing my train of thought here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been talking for, like, how many minutes now? Like, 40, something like that? An hour. Yeah. Um, almost, yeah. We got an hour to go, though, so. We're good. Um. Yeah, just stick with us, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on here. Uh. Hey. You know, you- m- most of the logos were the same from, uh, the Redskins, uh, it was the only difference was the spear. They had a spear mm-hmm. logo. Yep. Through uh through the years. And also, I don't know if you know this, Joe, but they went through multiple name changes. Actually, really, they weren't always called the Redskins. Like I don't remember what the other names are called yet, but they went through multiple. Like they, the original team name was the Redskins, and then they changed it for like a year. Then they brought back Redskins and changed it again, and then they brought uh, it back. So it's gone, they've gone through multiple name changes. Actually, it's like it's been the logo. Yeah, I think it had. I think it was called the Washington Bra- the Braves. They were they were named the Braves. Yeah, it was but, based. But they switched back because I guess it was something with the Atlanta Braves. They didn't want to, you know. Uh, actually, I, th- a team called the I think they shared the 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 stadium. Really, with the Braves. Yeah, with the actual baseball team. But it's in Atlanta. How does that look? I yeah yeah that that's a yeah, topic that's for another day. The, yeah, topic for another day. Yeah, so. Um, one of the arguably, well, actually, the best uh, coach in the NFL, Vince Lombardi. Oh, name of the Lombardi Trophy. Amazing coach. Yeah, he amazing act- coach. He actually saved the Washington Redskins, and he coached wow, them. Really? Yeah, he coached them from uh, in 1969. He got them to a winning record. Didn't get them to the Super Bowl, but had a winning record, which I guess they were they like were horrible before Vince Lombardi was there. Wow, really? Yeah. And he changed the logo. He he pushed for this new logo. He wanted it to be an R, just a plain R <laughs> in a in a red circle. Yeah. So I don't know if that has to do with any of the racism or that's yeah. just how he liked, you know, his preference, but Yeah, yeah, because I mean J.O.D. got it, man. And all's not very creative. Yes. Which I don't know. It, it's not very creative. I mean, that, that's not going to hype the fans up. That's like, I mean, you can't get any, you know, costumes behind that. Yeah, I mean, what? Are you going to see someone in the studio in awe? Be like, yeah, we'll play full. Yeah. I mean, the logo was only in effect from 1970 to 71. Jeez, one year, yeah. Re- kind, of, kind of like the um, that logo for the Indians. Exactly. The one that that five-year-old drew. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, it's not five-year-old, but... You know, what, like we, what we think it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but, yeah, the reason why it got changed was because Vince Lombardi passed away in the preseason mm. of, or actually before the preseason of the NFL. So it was like a show of trying to honor his legacy then by changing that. I don't think it was that so much. I think, uh, honestly, I think it was because the people did not like the logo. Okay. And because Vince Lombardi pushed for that logo so much because, you know, he's just a really strong voice and all of it. The one the eye? Yeah. Man, people will. Man, people can't agree on one thing because first off, 
You complained about the R, and now you're complaining about this. Seriously, guys. Yeah, he, uh... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so... The logo... The Re Redskins, well, let's get into the name. Yeah. What do you think... Like, the Redskins, that's a racial slur, right? Yeah, yeah, it is actually... I agree with... I kind of agree more with the, um... What the Redskins are protesting more than the Indians, because, yes, Redskin is actually... It is a derogatory term. It is a racial slur. Mm -hmm. That was a way to look down upon Native Americans. Yeah, I and the red the Redskins term that that's just been a racial slur. I mean, like when we first landed in America, it, they would see the Native Americans. They referred to them as Redskins. You know, that was just like I don't know. They didn't know how to really maybe you know. Define call, call them, them I guess. Else, but yeah, it's just like they just call them red skin. Yeah, for lack of a better term. Mm. Well, it was Define. probably because they saw them wearing red paint. Because you know, Native Americans like to you know, come themselves in paint. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Let's look at. I'm gonna look at a couple more things before we move on. Because um, we have something fun planned later, guys. We have some really fun planned. Um, we're gonna look at here a couple of comments that talks about what the comments from the Native Americans, their stance on yeah, well, the subject. Yeah, well, what they say. Yeah. Um, this, uh, guy here, Ray Halbritter, a member of Oneida Nation, I guess is how yep. you say it? Yep, yep. And the leader of the Change the Mascot campaign, or protest campaign. That was the thing I told you about with the, um, with the, um, I, 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 I saw it. That's mm -hmm. what that was. That was change the mascot. Yep. Uh, mentions that Native Americans do not deserve to be denigrated as cartoon mascots, and the team's move is a reflection of a grassroots movement that has pressed sports franchises to respect yep. Native people. Yep. And a response of this by the fans is "Save the Chief" has been yep. a, a Twitter hashtag, which was you know to counter the you know trying yeah, to change well, the well, mascot. Well, for the Indians fans, will say the chief, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ultimately, yeah. our voice was not heard. Nope, <laughs> because we would look at now as the tiny people. We don't have a voice at all. Yeah, it's like why? That's why like, you're listening to them, but not us. You're like, listening to the minority. There, <laughs> there was more Indians fans than there will ever be protesters, and you guys are listening to them. That is one side of it, there. If I've ever seen anything like that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we greatly outnumber the people that. Are wanting it to change. Yeah, they so have to listen the, to the whiny people. They always listen to the minority, and that's the thing that doesn't make sense. It's like when it actually needs to be changed. I agree. Yeah, but that, the, I mean, if if there's a lot more problems, okay. Here's what I think: there's a lot more problems facing the Native American people than just the logo. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you talk about those? Like problems that are actually you know affecting their culture and affecting yeah. how they've won their you know society. Don't concentrate on a logo. That's not going to help you they will save. Like, I mean, I, I'm going to say something really quick, but there are, you know, like there are Native Americans that are being used in um, trafficking and stuff. Why don't you concentrate on that instead of, you know, on like a stupid logo that have no impact on your society whatsoever? Concentrate on the stuff that's important. Right. It, you know, it's, it's, it's sad that people will also look at these little tiny controversies yep. instead of looking like the president, you know, he makes comments on the NFL about kneeling during the national anthem rather than worrying about, you know, some problem in another country that, yep. you know, is more important, like North Korea's yep. threat. Well, the national anthem is important though, but like, yeah, but I mean, he should be dealing with North Korea though. I mean, yeah, yeah. like you said, I mean, cause I mean, honestly, do you want to worry about offending people or do you want to worry about being not killed? having a country nuked? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you yeah, want to be we're gonna mutated? listen to you guys. Oh gosh, you're new. Yeah, do you want to be all dead in one, you know, couple of seconds? The war to Fallout. I mean, it'll. it'll <laughs> and if you ever play Fallout 4, I know what we're talking about. Mm hmm. Turn people into mutants. Because the president didn't listen. So, the president didn't take us that seriously. Yeah, and, uh. <laughs> and there's also another guy by the name of, I guess his name is Sundance, and, uh. Sundance. <laughs> <laughs> He's a longtime critic of Chief Wahoo. Oh, and here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's hear it. And executive director of the Cleveland American Indian Movement is continuing to voice his stance on the Cleveland Indian scenario. 
He comments that we're still going to be out there on opening day until that name is changed. Huh. So the ultimate goal, like I like we said earlier in the podcast, is to change the name, not yes. just the logo, but the name. Yeah, they're saying these are like. I saw a comment about, you know, that's just a little step. Just changing the the, the mascot is the little step, but the ultimate goal is to change the team name. Dad, they're not even being um, they're not even being um, I'm safe about it. They're just blatantly saying we want to change the name. Yeah, so the real question is... Dad, that's kind of dumb. Like, if you think about it, that's kind of dumb saying, you know, hey, you should say things like, oh, we only want to change the logo so people will trust you. But they'll just... I think it's kind of stupid just them blatantly saying, you know, we want to change the name. Because that's, you know... Yeah, and a, a question, you know, when it's all said and done in the podcast, a question is, why... You know, why would you give these people all why this... Why would you give them what they want? Yeah, why would you give them what they want... And then, you know, is that really going to satisfy him? No, it's not. It, it, it's like terrible analogy, yo. But it's like giving in to what, you know, if a, you know, um, if a little toddler is asking, you know, oh, I want a cookie. No, I want a cookie. No, I want a cookie. Okay, fine. Okay, That's basically what that is. Yeah, and then they're going to come back and say, okay, I want five cookies instead of just yeah, one. You're pampering. You're yes. babying. Yeah, you're giving them what they want, and then eventually they're going to say, you know what? More. We got, more yeah, more, 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 more. And they're going to, you know, since we already got rid of Chief Wahoo, then they're like, okay, next step. We're getting rid mm. of the name. It's like a toddler asking for cookies. That's it, it, it's, it's exactly. The, it is the equivalent of a toddler asking for cookies. Yes. That's a good analogy there. I like that. It um, is hilarious <laughs> to me. It's so funny to me. It's sad because the logo's gone, but it's funny. Yeah, it's... uh. It's kind of uh, interesting how... You toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and a thing to counter that is that a majority of people do not want the name changed. So, I mean... Yeah, I like, mean, yeah. We, they'll find Mr. Logo being changed. I mean, and Jared, we saw, I don't know if it was a Facebook post of the new logo of a new possible logo to see. Well, it was like, it was like a leaf. Mm-hmm. Or whatever it was like a C. That looked awesome. That looks pretty cool, actually. That, um, you know, that, that ultimate logo, remember the one you sent me that was, um, it was like a oh, white C. And yeah, was, yeah. If, if you ever get the chance, you should look it up. It's, uh, it's on Twitter. It's a picture of a C. It looks with a, awesome. Yeah, and it has like a feather in the middle. Yeah. And that was another thing. Oh, it's a feather. Yeah, it's like I a, thought it was a leaf for some no, reason. I like leaf because, you know, like, that Ohio wouldn't make any or, sense. No, it wouldn't, actually. <laughs> what the heck? My mind is just, uh. So, yeah, let's look at, let's accept the fact that Chief Wahoo has been removed from the jerseys. There's nothing, not really anything we can do about and it. And here's what's stupid, dude. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I keep it but that's a stupid, okay? The MLB made the dumbest decision ever. Mm-hmm. Because, okay, follow this, um, track of thinking, okay? Tell me if this is the stupidest thing ever. Mm-hmm. You take the logo away from the uniforms, but yet you continue to sell it in the stadium. Yeah, so... Like, t- like, so t- like, what the heck? Like, okay, you're only gonna like, get rid of half of it. If you're gonna get rid of it, just get rid of all of it. Yeah, I mean... Like, st- seriously. I mean, they're still gonna see the Chief Wahoo in the stadium. Yeah, and, and, and they're still gonna... Jeez. I mean... That's, that's the stupidest thing ever. And they think that it's just going to disappear from the stadium. Chief Wahoo will oh. live on for generations. Oh. oh, because of this, fans are going to be showing up, and that's all they're going to be wearing, probably. I mean, what I th- originally thought when they said they were going to take away Chief Wahoo, I thought they were going to take away him for completely... Yeah, like, absolutely everything. Like, completely wipe him off the face of the earth. Yeah, like from like ads. They, they're all taken away from ads, though, which is kind of sad, but... Yeah, I mean, we're not going to see him on TV. We're not... Well, I mean, we will see him on TV. Oh, yeah, with the, the fans. What up yeah. the side? Yeah, see? Hey. It, hey, to all you protesters, we ain't done with Chief Wahoo yet, so you better get ready. We're not going to end your fortress. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the originally, originally, I was thinking that they were going to sell him, in, you know, still in the store, and that... Um, and I was thinking, well, you know what? He's still going to live on for years and years yeah. and years to come. You know, even if he's not allowed. But he is still allowed, yeah. technically. So he's still going to live on. And even if he's not still in the store, as you got to remember, there's such thing as Amazon. There's such thing as the internet. There's such thing as people making their own versions of the logo. Uh, Fans are going to start selling shirts. And ah, if- but that's the problem, because... 
um, the commissioner didn't. They're not allowed to sell it on MLB.com anymore. Yeah, the the official people aren't. Yeah, and but but like I said, Amazon fans are gonna start like my wait no my, they um, that's copyright. They can't do that. Mm, I guess you're right, huh? Because the yeah. the reason why the Indians you gotta have a mission for ah oh, that's what stays, man. I I thought for a second, Jared, I thought for a second that they were gonna be able to you know sell it, like you know what I mean, like when the, you know when fans like to make their own logos because the company won't do it. Yeah, but no, the company Not that they own Chief Wahoo. The that, company still has copyright over Chief Wahoo. That's still the, control of it. Yeah, that's what they wanted to be able to still sell it, so they can can you know hold on to that copyright claim, and uh, um, yeah, so. Yep, so we're going to move on to... So let, let's con- conclude this here a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we've been going on for like how many... Like an hour and like... Yeah, just... We're, we're good. Pass them out. Yeah, we're all good. Anyways. Uh, um, to, to anyone who's stayed with us this fall, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... We have a boy need a death. So, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so what... So what? Do you, what's your conclusion on this? Oh, just I just think that, you know... And another thing, maybe we could talk about it later. You know, we did it, touch on everything. There was some more stuff we want to talk about, but I mean, we just don't have enough time. We're trying to cram this off this podcast. We're just trying to cram everything into one thing. Yeah, I mean, it's but, a I really mean, big that, like, topic. We haven't even talked about Chicago Blackhawks yet. Yeah, that's... And, and, and that's like a whole different world. That's like a yeah. Well, they're a little bit less controversial. Do you just than... want to touch on them really quick? Just would like give a quick synopsis. Or... Yeah, sure. Um... If uh, Chicago Blackhawks are a NH- NHL National Hockey League, which yep. I, I, I for one love hockey, I, I don't know about Joe, but I love yeah, hockey. I'm not so much a hockey guy myself, but um, watching people get checked is amazing. <laughs> so the Chicago team is, you know, is not under fire as much as you know the Redskins or the Indians because their logo apparently is. More, more friendly. Morally correct, or I don't know how. No, to put because it. they, they. This is exactly what they say. Because he, uh, he's not frowning. He has a smile. Yeah, on and, his face, and he's colorful. Yep. I mean, just looking at the. Yep, he's very logo. colorful, and he's smiling. That's the only reason. And I get. I don't know if you guys know this, but Black Hawk is not a reference to an Indian. It's actually a reference to a military squadron mm-hmm. that the creator during of the World team was during World the, War One, actually. Was yeah, World War One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that the leader of the, I guess, franchise. He was in the military, so he named it after his um, squad. Yep. So, that's a fun fact for any of you fans who didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, so it was more of like an on. It was honoring his squad, troops. Hey, his, his buddies and his troops. Yeah. yeah. Which apparently, I mean, that's why it's like getting on the fire as much. Because yeah. It's, yeah. And he didn't go. That their, their squad actually didn't go into war. Because the war was ending, yeah, just as they were, yep, yeah, as they were getting ready, so yep. and they were getting ready to be deployed, you know, which is I guess, which yeah. is I think is a good thing, you know, so then oh, they yeah, get no yeah. casualties, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, just a side fact, really quick, I've watched this series called The Pacific. It's you should watch it, dude, when you can. It's on it. Um, that's on Amazon. It's a video if you have that. Yeah, I'll have um, to check that out. It's during World War Two, and it was during when the U.S. was in Japan, and it it's a really good show. It's mind you, it's very brutal and it's very emotional, but it's a really good show. So yeah. Just a little side fact. Just tell tell anyone who has Amazon Instant Video and fly and watch that show, The Pacific. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, my idea on all of this is that I think that well, the world is too. Well, we po- think we think that the world is too politically correct. It 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 is. It really is. It's just people get offended by every little thing nowadays. It's despicable. It's it's very sad that we gotta go stoop down to the level of. You know, getting all mad about a football team or a baseball team because those are sports. It's supposed to be fun. You're ruining the fun of the game, and th- it's not meant to be offensive to people. Yeah. And it, it, like, like we said, I for one think it the logos. Some Native Americans have actually said that the logo they see it as an honor because no offense to Native Americans, but I don't think if it would be for the logos, we wouldn't even know who you guys are. I mean, because mm, we kind like, of... Like, seriously. I mean, the Native Americans have been seen as a race that has been kind of pushed aside and has been a minority all the time, has not yeah. had a voice in any subject, really. Yeah. They haven't really been talked about as much as other races, like African Americans and stuff. Yeah, because, like, with, you know, movements and stuff yeah, during, like, Martin Black Luther Black King. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. That's a whole different thing, but yeah. Yeah, so... 
You know, it's just I think that the world uh, world is being too politically correct, specifically yeah. Nat- uh, you know the U.S. and all the U all the U.S. The whole U.S. has been you know just changing more politically correct. That's how our world is. But I think they should be staying out of sports. I think yeah. that is just a little stooping down a little too low. And you know, it's just I think just a little. Okay, a lot. A, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And. uh... <laughs> Yeah, they have so fallen I, out of pit. Is what they've done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's you know it's getting worse, and I think they should stay out of it. I think that um, you know, and I'm I'm sure Aiden agrees with me that you know the you know we should just be looking at it as a sports team. Yeah, don't look at absolutely. Don't look at it absolutely. Don't look at a sports team as it being racist. No, it, it it's a character. Like, seriously, guys. Like, I understand what the Native Americans yes, are trying to yes, say, but... Yes, Yeah, seriously. Hey, especially with Washington. Like, because the team name is Redskin. That is actually a... Yeah, that's a, race, that's a racial slur. Yeah, so I understand a little bit more. I I guess I would be okay if that was changed. I mean, I'm not from Washington, so I don't speak for millions of Washington fans that are probably listening right now. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry for offending any Washington fans, but, yeah. Yep, trying to be politically correct here. <laughs> no, oh, I, I oh, was. Oh my goodness! See, we've been brainwashed into we've been, the politically correct. It's world. the media. They've oh they've gosh. controlled our brains. Yeah. So anyway, you know what? We don't care. You know what? Let's voice our opinions. We don't give a crap. So you know what? Just just let's just do what we need yeah, to do. Yeah. Just let's just get it. Let's get it done. Get it done. <laughs> and uh, so, anyways, the Indians. That's not the name itself is not a racial slur. No. It's so, like the one is. You know, it's just a, it's just a term to yep. you know. It's not it's, it's similar not racist. passion actually, but think about it. Yeah, but you know, I like I said, I think they should stay out of the sports yeah, thing. They and have no business. They have absolutely no business whatsoever in the world of sports. Definitely give uh, in the comments about it and l- let us know your yeah, please, thoughts on please. it. Please, because we would like to know what yes. you're thinking. We may even love to know everything. We may even include one of your comments in our next podcast. Yes, and we'll we'll touch on the subject once again before moving on to yep. our uh, you know the regular scheduled program. But yep, yeah. That's so I think, think that's pretty much what we think about uh, that. And now and, 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 and now for the fun stuff. This is uh, okay. So we have everything. Um, we have something every week called a weekly geek freak. Joe, do you want to explain what that is? Yes, uh, it will be. We're going to talk about anything that has to do with media. We could talk about video games, talk about a new gadget that just came that out. That kind of media. We don't mean. We don't mean. We're not talking about social media. No, no, we're not talking about like CNN and all that crap. We're talking about fun stuff, guys. This we're, is fun. We're talking about fun gadgets and things that we, you know, get all geeky about. I guess. Woohoo! Yep. <laughs> So, you know, I, w- I want to know. I'm interested. What's Burnout Paradise? Can you explain that? Okay, this game. Okay, there's um, 27th, uh, actually, later in 2018. Actually, in about March 29th. So how many more days? Joe, about, um, like, um, like, 14, something like that? Yeah, roughly. I've never really been good at math, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, back in the day, I don't know about how many of you guys know about this. So any racing fan, racing game fan that plays racing games, you'll know what I'm talking about here. Mm-hmm. But that Paradise was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, arcade racer ever. Yes, and it is created by EA, which also created... Bleh, like, okay, EA used to be good, but they were kind of on a losing streak. Kind of with like, I'm sorry if I offended anyone, but with Battlefield, their microtransaction system sucks. I'm sorry, it just does. <laughs> EA is a one-trick pony, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they are. Oh man, and, that's exactly. Uh, yeah, you know they got they got that racing down. That's about all they got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. Anyway, guys. Um, but I'm this came out in 2008. It was on PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. Wow, that felt weird to say because I'm so used to PS4 now. But um, basically, it wasn't. It was the world's first. I don't know if it's the world's first, but it was the first popular open world racing game. You basically um, there were 75 cars and. You would basically, your goal is to just, you know, win all the races, just, you know, complete all the objectives and stuff, but here's the fun part. It rewards you for crashing. Like, <laughs> like, like with other racing games, it's like, oh, you crash, you lose, but in this game, oh, you can't crash, we actually reward you for it. <laughs> yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, and this game was just, like, it was amazing. Like, it got perfect 10 out of 10 on every review site. I don't know if it's a 10 out of 10, but at least an 8.0 or high or something, and it was just... It was amazing, and I, when I was, um, nine, it came out when I was nine. 
And what you could do is like, I completed it 100% in the game. I had every achievement, I had every race first place done, I had every car. My favorite car was the pl This is a real thing, guys. To any of you playing Burnout Paradise who completed it, you guys know what I'm talking about here. The, um, PCPD Krieger Police F1 car. That car was awesome. Like, if you had that car, and yes, this game had online capabilities, so if you had that car online, like, people wouldn't even race you, because, like, they knew that you would absolutely obliterate them off the map. Like, you would literally obliterate them in races. Like, they would not stand a chance against you if you had that car. And so, this is a lot more faster than Need for Speed, correct? Oh, oh man, if you thought, yeah, it's like, okay. How I compare it is it's like, okay. Need for Speed is NASCAR. And, um, I would equate Burnout to Pod Racing in Star Wars. Oh, wow. <laughs> if you ever, if you guys have seen Phantom Menace, you know what I'm talking about, but yeah. Like, 550 miles an hour, like... Like, sometimes you go so fast that you can't even see the one around you going so fast. It's amazing. It's the, like, the funnest game ever. Yeah, so when does this, uh... When does this come out? March 29th, 2018, and it's all, I think it's only gonna cost, like, um, 20, um, like, $20 or something. And the best part is that... Now, EA's had a history of this in the past, with making, um, microtransactions, sorry. Um, but the thing is, with this game, they was done. Good. I think EA has redeemed their... Redeemed themselves with this, I think. Are, so, are you a fan of, uh, you know, like, DL DLCs? Fan of DLC, but not microtransactions. Here's the difference, okay? To, to the difference? Doesn't know. Microtransactions is, like... Have you ever played Candy Crush? Um, I've played similar games to that, but yes, I understand. Yeah, when 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 you when you when you one of the lives like oh pay yeah you got two dollars to get more lives yeah exactly that kind of crap like uh -huh. that I hate that's in a lot of games yeah that's app store. yeah that's it that's become like a normality I mean especially with EA oh I mean the app store has been mostly doing that but yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. been moving over to stuff like that yeah but I'm so happy that Bonnet Fortis doesn't have that like like um take Battlefield Four specifically for instance mm -hmm. you have to pay two dollars to get a skin. Like just oh like a, just like a jacket, wow, or something. Like it's insane. It's not. That's not a good thing, guys. That's not. Yeah, but but what? Well, Paradise is not happening. So I'm so excited. And here's a here's a really good thing. Since the remastering Burnout Paradise, they may be thinking of in the future creating another Burnout game, a new one, a new one that hasn't come out yet, a brand new one with a new, with a new IP new and concepts. everything. New concepts. Yep. That's see, that's that's what I like to see. I don't I don't like to see so much remakes. Uh, it, it's yeah. fun to see remakes in like really really popular games, but, but if you like but not Paradise, yeah. yes. But if you you know just make it of like oh like relating it to Pokemon, mm -hmm. they will make a remake of almost every single yeah, like, game. Yeah, like seriously. And and one more thing I forgot to mention, guys. Sorry, is that get but not Paradise. Okay, if you have a PS, so oh. you definitely recommend. It. Yeah, PS4. Just if you have a PS4, just. Just buy the game, okay? Yeah, Even if I'm not a racing fan, because... Tell me if this sounds good, guys. Okay. Hitting a jump at 100 miles an hour, going 50 feet in the air, with a toy RC car that hovers. Yeah, I mean, who gets to do that in real life? Like the DeLorean. Which the DeLorean is in the game, actually. Yeah, so, yeah. Overall, I get Bonite Paradise a 10 out of 10, and I would highly recommend it. Awesome game. Okay, so Joe, do you have a game that you want to talk about? Uh, not so much a game, actually. It's more of... Really? It's called Nintendo Labo. Oh, what is this? Nintendo Labo is, uh... Basically, it has to do with cardboard. Now you're thinking... Cardboard? What the heck? Yeah, cardboard. What? what, what how can you make a... How can you... Make, make a game out of cardboard? Yeah. Well, here it uses the Nintendo Switch. Um, there's like, you uh, know... Obviously. Over, yeah. And first off, let's get a little history about the Switch. First off, well, the Switch uh, came out with a lot of hype build around it, you know, with it being a portable console, but also a home console, so you can dock it at your house and play on the TV, mm -hmm. but also take it on the go and be like uh -huh. on an airplane or something, be able to play Zelda: Breath of the Wild <laughs> that, on the that airplane. That game's amazing. I highly recommend that too. Yes, it is insane how many units it sold. Like it sold more than PS4. Like, uh, like in the first year though, but it's like four point. 8 million, like I was just gonna get to that, but like 4.8 million consoles in the first year or so. Good gracious! I mean, good gravy. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> I mean, that's more than the Wii. Can you believe that? That's more than the PS4, dude! I mean, the Wii in its lifetime... The PS4, lifetime? I think, only sold like 1 million in a year. It beat it by 3 million. Holy goodness. 
But anyways, yeah. So these Nintendo Lado. Yeah. So these little. The, the remotes on the Nintendo Switch, if oh, you're not okay. familiar with it. They're called Joy-Cons. They're called Joy-Cons, and they detach from the, the screen that, you know, that you're able to take on the go. so much fun to play with. Oh my goodness. And highly recommend this console. So, you can, so the Nintendo Labo is cardboard that, I, I don't know what it's called, like a smart, I don't know, I in my yeah. head I call it smart cardboard. Yeah, they, they have it, mm, smart board, big plot. Um, they haven't really given a lot of information about it yet, so. Yeah, so, it's... Um, you can attach the Joy-Cons on, say, like, you're building a little, uh, a piano. You could build a piano out of cardboard, and then attach, like, the screen or something on, like, slip it onto the, in, th like, you know, like a prop, like you're looking at a paper, you know, as you're playing piano, and it'll, you can basically do piano lessons on it. And <laughs> you, you, like, build it yourself. That's not the only thing you can do. If you want to, you can, um... What, what are some of the things you can do? I haven't really... Um, some some of them, some of the featured ones are like a bug or something, so you, like you put two Joy-Cons on it, and it, I guess they like vibrate, and that's how they move. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's like, you know, like a... What is it? Um, the, like those Wobo bugs, like those Hex bugs. Hex bugs, like, yes, yeah, that's hex the word bugs, I'm looking yep. for. Um, and, you know, it has a little, you use the screen as a controller instead of the, it's it's wacky because the Joy-Cons Not Hex bugs, are... you, you, you don't think of the Sphero. Yeah, it's that, well, that, that's not a bug, but yeah, it's, it's no. I mean, the hex bugs vibrate to move. That's what it was. Oh, called. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's kind of back uh, bass backwards because the uh, <laughs> the that's <laughs> backwards. That's funny. Because the Joy Cons <laughs> are on the screen instead of on in your hands. You know, so you're using the screen. And you know, I guess they're they're really. Exp I mean, Nintendo's gonna be making bank with this. I mean, <laughs> it's a shame. It's I mean, this is money, man. this is just money for Nintendo. If you don't know, Nintendo is known for making ga uh, games, but they're also known for making toys. Yeah, they were yep, known as the toy company before. Actually, I don't know if Joe knows this. Obviously, he probably does. But <laughs> I think Nintendo was actually a card company, right? Oh for, yeah, like, when they first came out, eighteen ninety something. Yep, eighteen ninety seven, I think. Yeah, I don't remember, like... but yeah, sometime there. And Nintendo, in case you don't know, is Japanese for heaven. Mm-hmm. Which is coincidental because <laughs> what we talk about, what we try to you know, show off here, but yeah, that's kind of coincidental. <laughs> and you know, so I mean, one of the prices here, sixty nine ninety nine for cardboard. <laughs> yeah, Think about that. You pay seventy dollars for cardboard. The last thing I would expect is to pay seventy bucks for a piece of cardboard. <laughs> but you know, if it has a Nintendo seal on it, I'm getting it. What is it a special brand of cardboard that only Nintendo has access to? <laughs> oh, and this one's eighty bucks. It's like a robot kit, and you can be okay, like punch as a robot. Okay, that looks cool. Yeah, that does. But I like mean, uh, seventy dollars for a piece of cardboard. That's kind of funny to me. Now, I could see this being more of, you know, for those really hardcore Nintendo fans, but oh, also, yeah, yeah. but also for like little kids, you know, because they'll, they'll love just the, you know, being involved with the game. Oh, oh yeah. And this oh. is something that I think kids, it's almost like uh, Legos, you know, for kids. Oh, it's like, my little brother loves Legos, so he might love less. Yeah, Nintendo's like, hey, you know, Legos, we're giving you a run for your money. My little brother Aaron loves those things. I mean, he loves them. I mean, there's like so much stuff I could talk about. Yeah, it's like not, not even. Yeah, I can't even cover in this. We want to know on time, so yeah, we gotta. Yeah. So, anyways, I already mentioned about Nintendo being the uh, Nintendo Switch being the, the last one. Selling. Last one is I think Pokemon, oh, right? Pokemon. Uh, there's next. two more actually. Yeah, Pokemon next, right? Yes. So, okay. um, for any Nintendo fan that's like a hardcore Pokemon fan or just the casual one, yep. they're looking into that. Look at Pokemon, Pokemon game, game for, the for the Switch. Switch for the Switch. Yeah. And, and to any of you who um um heard about this, even non Nintendo fans probably heard about this game, Pokemon Go. Yeah, that it was a it's huge mobile. game. And they're just thinking, well, what if we make a full Pokemon game? Because for the Switch, because it's portable, just like 3DS, you know. Yeah. And the 3DS was a, a very popular console with oh, over. Oh yeah. They have like over 60 million sold, I think. Speaking of Pokemon and um. Nintendo 3DS, there's a Pikachu 3DS XL. Just, yes, just, want to say just, that. just for anybody who was uh, interested in that. That thing is so cute. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, so the Pokemon wait on the Switch, they've been... They they did confirm it is in development, but they are very low-key about it. They haven't like made a major announcement yet. <sighs> and so they're saying that E3, possibly, the coming up in June... They're going oh, to be... my birthday month. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's going to be quite a gift for my birthday. Mine as well. And, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So yeah, that's coming up soon, and uh, so we'll be excited to see that. Hopefully, they'll unveil it finally, because mm -hmm. I, I am yeah. dying with anticipation for mm -hmm. that. Yep. And so, a Aiden, what's one of the games that you've been waiting for? Oh, the Metroid Prime 4, guys. Oh my gosh. It's this coming. This game, this game. <laughs> these games. Oh my word, these games. Okay. Okay, the last Metroid Flying game came out 10 years ago. Uh -huh. I don't remember exactly when that was, but like 10, 20, 2018 now. Um, 10 years was how many, dude? Oh, it's 17 it's minus 10, 2000 what? Uh, wait, what? Um, 2018 minus 10. Uh, it's been about. I've never really been into math, guys, sorry. Um, 2008. 2008. Came out in 2008, yep. So oh, that, a decade ago, yeah. yeah so it's all. It's same year as when I put it, coincidentally. <laughs> Which is like a major discussion. Wow, today, so, that, yeah. Cue the, you know, the. Yep, um, anyway, it's Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> okay, enough. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime series is awesome. Um, originally came out on the GameCube. Um, I'm sure Jim knows about Metroid, not, you know, the actual Metroid games, but he knows about Samus. Yes, and she, I, she was a bounty hunter. Yes. And basically, you went to different worlds, and... I mean, I haven't, like, grew up with the games, no. but it's, they certainly look fun, and yeah. I, I played a little bit of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Metroid, um, originally was not actually a first-person shooter, which is Metroid Prime is. Mm -hmm. Metroid actually came out when my dad was my age. Wow. It was in 1986, it was called, guess what it was called? What? It was called Metroid. Oh. Yeah, and it came out for the um, Nintendo, the actual Nintendo, like Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES. Yeah, which actually had a lot of games. Oh, that oh that God. thing was fun. Yeah. I mean, it was it was like the 3DS today. You know, the 3DS is jam packed with games. <laughs> yeah, you know, more than the PlayStation and Nintendo Switch at the time. I'm a PlayStation fan, but I will admit they have a lot more games. I will admit. I mean, the 3DS has just been around forever, so yeah. But that's besides the point. So, mm -hmm. um, Metroid. Uh, What's your point for? Yeah. When do you think they're gonna announce it? Spe uh, speculation. Um, at least maybe this E3 or next. Because listen, all excuse me, all they've done so far is show a logo. That's literally all they've done. Yeah, it's like like, like they just showed a thirty second ad and it was like, that's me trying to imitate the Metroid track. Um, but um, <laughs> Metroid Prime track for any Metroid fans. They put a disclaimer there. in this video. Yeah, 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 to... Disclaimer: I do not own Metroid. <laughs> don't please don't take our channel down, Nintendo. Yeah, Sorry. please don't. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so, yeah, all they did is it's a literally second ad showing Met 4, the number 4. Well, they showed the Samus logo before that, but, they, um, they showed the number 4, and then they showed Metro Prime, showed the name, and then that's it. They just cut the black. Yeah, I'm like, wow. And you can it release... managed to make millions, no, here's the thing. That was enough to make millions of fans as excited as if they would have seen an actual trailer. Yeah, so basically, I could release a logo of some, you know, Pokemon game coming out, but then the people are like, Oh, this is gonna be great, and then, you know... I oh, it was more like, than that for Metroid, dude. It was like, people were sweating with excitement, they were... Well, yeah, because it's been so long. Just like yeah. with... I mean... Just like with the new Bun-Out coming mean, out. like, Zelda Breath of the... Like, any Zelda game, it takes a while to make them, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know that. You know, because they, they just want quality, like, really good quality. That's what I love. Quality over quantity is my motto. And, yes, and Metroid, I'm sure, will be probably up there with Breath of the Wild and Mario Not to Party offend any Zelda fans, but I think it'll be the number one um, Nintendo game when it comes out. It'll, oh, yeah. It, it'll beat Zelda by far. Oh, it'll, I mean... It'll beat Mario Kart, it'll beat... Even if the game sucks, which and I don't... Okay, here's the thing. And... Oh, sorry. What are we gonna say, bud? And the new Mar and the new Mario game, it'll be... Oh, yeah, there's a new Mario game. Okay, that's... Yeah. Yeah, that's beside the point. But yeah, yeah, well, not with new Mario, but, um... Here's the thing. The original studio isn't making it. The Metro Clown games. The original one made the original Metro Clown games. The, so, should the we trust studio, to that? I'm excited, but I'm also scared, because... In case you guys don't know, the original, um... Creators were a company named, um, Retro, Web, Retro Studios. Didn't they work on Donkey Kong as well? Or yep, yep, yeah. Donkey Kong Country to be Ah, yes. Yeah, yep. And they made, yep, and came up with the original Metro Prime games, and it, they're not making it. And it's kind of gets me worried. But then again, it's a chance for a company to take it into a new direction, and if they don't mess it up, it could be great. And I want to make a point here. 
Um, Nintendo is very picky with their franchise. Oh, you know, with their by far, their, yes. They when they entrust when they give Mario like over to uh, Ubisoft for the Metroid Rabbids game. Rabbids. That game was fun. Yeah, they gave it to them, and they watched very closely how yep. they created the characters mm -hmm. because they did not want them to mess up their name. And that's a character that comes out every year. Now, think about how much more it's going to be with Metroid. This is a game that hasn't come out in 10 years, dude. So yeah. they're going to be watching them like a hawk. And I believe that this is going to push over 5 million consoles. Over, just this, to stand this is gonna, Okay, Metroid Prime 4, if Mario Odyssey didn't do it, which it did, Mm-hmm. Metroid Prime 4 is going to make millions of people buy the Switch. Mm -hmm. Because this game, it's been kind of... Forgive me, but it's been kind of pissed upon. Some yes. of the games because, you know, it's... You know, been counted as... Oh, like Federation Force. That was a disaster. Ugh. That game was a disaster. You've actually played that, right? You've played Federation Force? Oh, I just watched gameplay. Yeah, it was like, horrible. ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It, just, it was like Halo clone. It's not... Yeah, it's not good. But, um, yeah, Metroid Prime 4, so... Yeah. So what? How, on a scale of one to ten, how are you, how excited are you on it? Ten. Nine point five. Oh, 15 out of ten. Come on. No, 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 no. Nine point five because it's, because of the studio. Oh, gotcha. Much of studios isn't making it, so I'm kind of iffy. Well, we'll see what happens. But yeah. Um. For yeah. anyways. Okay. So that was uh that concluded our weekly geek freak update yep and uh by the way this is a uh segment on our thing i i did not mention that before but we will be doing that every podcast we'll come up with new content yep. for you guys to listen to yep uh you know our thoughts on everything and remember that you can reach us on youtube soundcloud and we can Twitter and facebook as well yes twitter you could reach out to us comment you know, maybe even Please give us Please let us know what you think of this podcast, if you like it or if you hate it. Yeah, give us uh, some suggestions, maybe even on a next week's topic. Or yep. I mean, we, we got stuff in the works. So. Yeah, we have five. We have four more weeks worth of stuff. But I if mean, you want to yeah. talk about something, you can just mention it. It might change. I mean, one week it could change. So. Yeah, one day it could change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could be like, yeah, I want to talk about gun control the next day. And then, you know, I'll be like, no, I want to talk about, you know, what they're doing in North Korea, you know. Oh, space SpaceX or something like that, yeah. You know, I'll completely <laughs> jump around. Yeah, so. me too. Yeah, it's anyway, Anyways, it's crazy. So uh, stay tuned to our, uh, you know, various channels for updates. Uh, I'll, you know, stay updated on Twitter. I will mention some, you know, different things that we'll, we may do or yep, change. Same here. Yep. I, I mean, I'm not as good at Twitter and stuff as Joe is, but I'll try to keep up. <laughs> yep. I'll try to. So thank you for, uh, for... Thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening to our first podcast. Uh, yep. Join us... Tune in next week if you'd like to listen to more. Yep. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube if you're listening off of YouTube right now. Please do subscribe to our channel. We will be updating it mm -hmm. every week. Uh, at least we'll try every week. And follow us on SoundCloud, please. Because, yes. I, I mean, for one, Jared, I don't know if you agree with this, but I personally believe that podcasts are more listened to on SoundCloud than on YouTube. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, more of, like, a home thing. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, okay. And if yep. you want visuals, because yeah, I, will be put, yeah, I will be putting pictures on our YouTube video, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously you're looking at it right now, but... Well, yeah. when we can afford it, when we can, I mean, we're working on a pretty small budget right now, because it's our first podcast, but I mean, as we... No, I mean, know. no, I mean, like, on the YouTube channel, Oh, like on the... oh, okay, that's what I said. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean that doesn't take any money. No, it, no, it doesn't. No. Um, yeah, so you're you're so looking at pictures right now. So if you're on YouTube, and so we will be doing that. That's great for visuals if you need that. Yep. So yeah, so thank you for listening. And, thank you guys so much. And uh, we will be tuned in next week uh, for our next one. Just stay tuned. next week at what time, Jude? Well, we don't really have a specific time, but anyway, like nine o'clock somewhere around there. We'll give you guys specifics when you find out. But yeah, th thanks for listening, guys.